walillahi alhamd. Okay, so inshallah, please uh, I'll send up the, the, the dua if you haven't memorized it, inshallah. But uh, generally, we are aware of it, and so uh, please begin your reciting the tafsir. So once it's necessary to recite once, not multiple times, but once um, uh, after every single salah. Men will say it audibly, uh, and women will say it silently. Okay. So now we'll continue on with the Qurbani. Uh, inshallah, it won't be too long. I'll take only a few minutes, inshallah, um, just to discuss a couple of things, a couple of masail related to Qurbani, um, as the majority of us have to do Qurbani. Um, the hadith I mentioned, Rasulullah sallallahu last Jum'ah I mentioned that, or the previous Jum'ah, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, the one who, uh, who, who doesn't, who has the ability, man kana lahu sa'ad, the one who has the ability uh, to do Qurbani. ولم يضحي and he doesn't uh, he doesn't do udhiya he doesn't sacrifice the animal فلا يقرب أن مصلانا he should not even come to the Eid Gah he should not even come for the Eid prayer such a severe warning uh, in another hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentions that you know uh, there's no there's no activity there's no action on the day of udhiya more dear to Allah Taala than the sacrificing of animals and this animal will come on the day of judgment uh, with its horns uh, and its hair and its hooves, meaning it will come with all of its body parts. Right? And this sacrifice will be accepted uh, before the blood even reaches the ground. And so Rasulullah says, فَطِيبُوا بِهَا نَفْسَ So do it with a good and happy heart. In another hadith, uh, Rasulullah was asked, you know, what is this udhiya? So Rasulullah said that this is the, the sunnah of your father Ibrahim salam. And so the Sahaba, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, what, what do we get out of it? What, what do we get out of uh, doing this udhiya. Rasulullah he says, Bi kulli sha'aratin hasana, for every single uh, for every single fiber it, there it will be a reward. For every single hair on the animal they will there will be a, a hasana, a reward. So Rasul the Sahaba they asked Ya Rasulullah, what about uh, wool? You know, obviously there's so many fibers there, so many hair and follicles there. So they said uh, Rasulullah he says, Bi kulli sha'aratin mina sufi hasana for every single fiber of wool also there will be a, a reward, meaning there will be a good deed as well. So there's of course so much reward behind doing this and we should all take it as, uh, as an honor that we have the opportunity and we have the ability to do it, right? Alhamdulillah, we should be grateful for this opportunity, right? And so now going into it, going into the Masail, as I uh, generally give this disclaimer that this, these, these Masail are based on the Hanafi Madhab, uh, but the, the Shafi'i Madhab are not too, it's not too far off, so uh, it's very similar. Uh, in a couple of masail, they're different. And if you have any questions in the Hanafi, uh, in the Shafi'i Madhab, you can ask me specifically, inshallah, I'll mention it later. Uh, but regarding the Hanafi Madhab, uh, which the majority of us follow, uh, the Qurbani is wajib. And it's wajib on every single baligh, meaning adult. Right? Adult meaning an Islamic, uh, according to Islamic standards, meaning once uh, a person reaches puberty, that person is considered as an adult in Sharia. And so therefore, Therefore, that person will need to uh, that person will need to do qurbani. Um, not, it's not necessary on children, right? So, because baligh is a condition, it's not necessary on children. Again, it's not necessary, but if you would like to, you can. If a father, if a mother wants to do qurbani on behalf of their young children, they can do so. But it's not necessary uh, for them. Um, a male and female, right? So baligh, male and female. So man or woman, they must do the qurbani. Um, uh, now, as for other family members, sometimes we do it on behalf of, you know, our grandparents or our, uh, you know, our parents or whoever it may be, right? Even whether they're alive, whether they're, they're dead, uh, it's permissible. You can do it uh, so long. If they're alive, you have to ask them and take their permission and then you can do it on their behalf as well. Uh, the second is that the person has to be sane, of course. Uh, the mental capacity has to be there. Third, this is important, uh, nisab. A person must possess nisab amount. Nisab amount is that amount whereby a person qualifies to be considered as, uh, as rich in Sharia, right? So uh, according to our standards, um, generally there are two standards, the gold standard and the silver standard, right? The silver standard is too low uh, for us in America to be considered. It's about like $500. Every single person has $500. So therefore the, the scholars of, uh, of America, they've agreed, uh, or at least a good, a good number of scholars have agreed that we should adopt the gold standard, which is about $5,000. So if a person has $5,000 uh, or more, uh, then that person must, aside from their, uh, aside from their, uh, their, their needs, 
and aside from their hawaj asliya, meaning those things which they're required to live off of, for example, their house, aside from their one car, aside from a couple of pair of clothes, besides these things, if they have cash equivalency of $5,000 or more, or in, 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 in Udhiyah is actually a bit more strict, meaning in the sense that if a person doesn't have $5,000 in cash, but a person has uh, excess needs, or rather excess uh, items that uh, reach the value of $5,000, then they will have to give udhiyah as well. So for example, I have, hypothetically, right, I have, for example, two cars, right? I only need one car, right? The second car is just, you know, uh, is, is just there, right? So if uh, one car is for personal and, and for daily use, the second car, of course, I just have it. And so that second car is not part of my hawaj asliya. It's not part of my needs or my essential needs. And so therefore, uh, if that second car equals more than $5,000, then I will, I will have to give udhiyah uh, as well. Of course, if you have $5,000 in cash, then you definitely need to give it. Whether that $5,000 was for zakat, whether it was for, uh, you know, for buying a house, for buying a car, for whatever it is. If you have $5,000 in cash today, meaning, uh, sorry, not today, uh, on the days of Eid, so the 10th, 11th, 12th, the 10th, 11th, 12th, if you have... $5,000 or more on any of these three days at any given point, then you must give udhiyah, you must do qurbani, right? Um, and the fourth is that you shouldn't be traveling. This, these are the four conditions uh, for the person who needs to do qurbani. So as I mentioned, that uh, it will be due after the Eid prayer on the 10th until the 12th, until sunset of the 12th. Uh, it's best to do it on the first day, meaning the 10th. If you can't, it's also, it's better to do it on the 11th day. If not, then it's also fine to do on the 12th day as well. Now, for those of us who are doing Qurbani overseas, right? Now, what should we do? Uh, for those of us doing Qurbani overseas, we should consider uh, the timing of their own local time zones, right? Their own local time zones for the, from the start till the end. You will consider the local time zones of the place where the Qurbani is being done. Uh, and, and as for doing Qurbani overseas, uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, many people, they do Qurbani overseas, right? And, and the reason... There are different reasons why people do it overseas. Some people, they do it overseas just to uh, get rid of the headache. That I don't have to do qurbani and, uh, you know, I'll just get rid of it and uh, it's cheaper, you know. So these are a couple of reasons why people do it overseas. If you're doing it for those reasons I mentioned, it's cheaper or it's, uh, it's less of a headache for you, then you'll be sinful for doing, it, uh, for doing it in this manner. If we're doing it in this manner, you'll be sinful. Why? Because you're doing it with the wrong intention. On the other hand, if you do qurbani with the overseas with the intention that my entire animal will be going to the poor, meaning uh, all the meat will be distributed amongst the poor and, um, you know, inshallah, it'll be more beneficial for them, then you'll actually be more rewarded doing it overseas. You'll be rewarded more for doing it overseas. Again, if you have the correct intention, if you're doing it so that you can get rid of it, then uh, it'll be sinful. If you're doing it with the proper intention that I'm doing it so that others can benefit and so that my meat can be given to uh, entirely to those in need, then inshallah, you'll be rewarded. Uh, and my mashwara, my recommendation is always that at least do some shares, at least do some animals locally and then do the remainder abroad. For example, let's say your family is let's say 10 people, right? Including your siblings and your parents, whoever it is, uh, your children or those who have to do qurbani, let's say it's 10 people, right? So do, let's say for example, do one cow overseas or with the intention that the entire meat will be given to, uh, to, to the poor and then do the remainder three shares locally, right? Do the remainder three shares locally so that of course you, uh, you, know, you can uh, benefit and of course you can participate and the... Um, you will not lose out on the spirit of Qurbani. But uh, otherwise what happens is that a person, uh, they do Qurbani and uh, it becomes more of like just something to get over. Like, oh, okay, it's just a Qurbani. And our children, they never experience uh, Qurbani and they never experience the, the importance of Qurbani and how to do it and what we should do. And so uh, my recommendation, always do some shares locally. Uh, take your family, make it a day of outing and... Uh, and, 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 and so that they a learning experience for them, for yourselves, for everyone. Uh, the age of the animals, right? This is generally agreed upon, right? Uh, that uh, the age of the animals, the goats and sheep, they must be uh, one year old, right? Goats and sheep, they must be one year old. Uh, but if the sheep, it's uh, six months, it's age uh, is six months old, again, only for the sheep, all right? Only for the sheep. If it's six months old, or, or more obviously, uh, and it's similar to the one-year-old, 
Meaning, for example, if you were to put two sheep together, one is six months, another is one year old. If you were to put them together and they look identical, you cannot differentiate between them, then it's fine. Then you can do the six month old. But you can't just, it's not that the minimum is six months. No, no, no. Understand the difference. Many people, they just say, oh, it's six months, done. No, it's not. Six months must look like a one year old to the point that if they're put together, you will not be able to tell the difference. Okay, everyone understands this? Sheep only, specifically to sheep. Bulls, cows, buffalo, they must be two years old. Bulls, cows, buffalo, bigger animals, they must be two years old. There is no difference uh, of opinion according to the Hanafi or the Shafi Madhab in this regard. That they must be a minimum of two years old. If, okay, well, let's finish this. Uh, and uh, ca uh, uh, camels, they must be five years old. Right, so now, understand again, goats, sheep, generally one year old. Sheep, uh, sorry, uh, sheep, uh, if they are six months but they look uh, as if they are one year old, then it's fine. Uh, bulls, cows, uh, buffaloes must be two year old and camels must be five years old. If, if the animal is anywhere uh, younger than that, if any animal is younger than two years old for a cow, camel, for a cow, uh, bull, buffalo, it is not valid. That qurbani will not be valid. Again, I reiterate. It, that qurbani will not be valid. So you'll spend hundreds and thousands of dollars and it'll all go to waste. Your qurbani will not be valid and you must repeat that qurbani. Right? So please understand. Sometimes people, uh, they don't understand these simple concepts. Right? And they, they think that it's a joke that we're just saying, uh, oh yeah, you can play around with the numbers and whatever. You know, sometimes to save a few hundred dollars, people, they do this. To save a few hundred dollars, they, they say, okay, we'll just take the, uh, the, the smaller animal without realizing the consequences that you must Either you do it in this world or you do it in the next. You answer for it in the next. It's that simple. Right? So please make sure that the animal is, uh, is at, at least that age. And generally the farmers, they know. And, and you know, uh, just to be on the safe side, get a bigger animal. Get an older animal uh, with more meat. You'll have to pay a bit more, but inshallah, it'll be worth it. You'll, you'll be sure that the animal is, uh, is at least two years old. Right, so now goats and the smaller animals, the sheep, goats, they're sufficient for one share. The cow, bull, etc., they're enough for seven shares. Um, and, and so you can have seven people, uh, seven shares for one big animal. Um, and you cannot, yeah, these are important notes, right? Uh, you cannot substitute the qurbani for money. You know, some uh, vegans or funny people, they, they say, let's, we'll give money. We'll give money instead of, uh, you know, instead of doing the qurbani. This, this is real this is actual people they are doing this and there are some you know clowns i'll call them clowns who, who try to go and, and advocate for this and they actually try to go and get approval for this this is not the case you must slaughter an animal and what's funny is uh, subhanallah you know people they love uh, you know blaming the muslims that we're barbaric and, and you're slaughtering animals but then no one complains about mcdonald's no one complains about wendy's and all and, and not only that there are many many religions right there are many religions that actually sacrifice animals as well we're not the only religions. We're, we're not the only religion that sacrifices animals, but there are many religions that sacrifice animals, and so therefore, uh, I mean, but it's funny. People love targeting the Muslims, right? And so, and not only that, we have the most humane methods of slaughtering the animal, which I'll mention very quickly, inshallah. Um, so, the, okay, the second thing is that you cannot substitute the qurbani for money, just like salah. You can't just say, hey, I'm not gonna. I feel like praying fajr today, so I'm just going to give ten dollars. It doesn't work like that, right? You can't substitute uh, money for your amal. The third is, uh, once you receive the meat, it's preferable to divide. Again, listen to me very carefully. It's preferable to divide the shares in three parts. Once you receive the meat, it's preferable to divide the share in three parts. One for yourself, one share for uh, your, your, your family, and the third share you divide amongst your friends. This is preferable, this is not wajib. This is preferable, not wajib. It's not necessary. It's good if you do it. If you don't, if you say, I want to keep my entire share, Bismillah, go ahead, do, do as you feel. Uh, the fourth is that the animal must be free from all defects, meaning the ears, the horns, uh, must not be broken, uh, especially from the roots, it must not be blind, it must, not, uh, it, must, it must have a tail, it must not be sick, it must not uh, be toothless or teethless, meaning it must have teeth, uh, and so on and so forth. Meaning it must be free from defects. Right? The fifth is that a castrated animal is okay. A pregnant animal is okay. Uh, but initial pregnancy is okay. Initial pregnancy is okay, but if the animal is, uh, is, is along its pregnancy, then it's better, not, it's makru to, to, to slaughter the animal. It's better not to slaughter uh, a, a severely pregnant animal. Right? It's better not to. Uh, but a castrated animal is, is fine. 
And the sixth is that there's no qada of any missed qurbani. Right? So now what happens? If a person missed qurbani, there's no qada. Meaning you don't slaughter animals, but rather you must still give the value of that animal in charity. So let's say for example, you missed 10 years of your life, you didn't give qurbani. So you must give the value of 10, uh, 10 shares or 10 animals in, in sadaqah. Okay, so if it's $300, $350, whatever it is, uh, you must give $3,500, for example, for the past 10 years, if you did not give Qurbani. So there is, uh, you must give your Qurbani, um, and um, uh, even if you did miss it, you must give it later on. Right? And lastly, uh, the method of Qurbani, how should we do Qurbani? The first is, of course, we take care of the animal. Uh, you know, Generally, we don't really take care of the animal, but subhanAllah, uh, we make sure that the farm that we're getting it from, they take care of the animal. Right? Sometimes you see uh, very disgusting uh, situations where they leave the animals very caged up and, and, and very malnourished. They just bring the animal and then they just feed it whatever just to survive for a week and then they slaughter it. This is not right. They should, you should take care of the animal. You should make sure that your Qurbani animal is being taken care of. The second is that you shouldn't cause the animal any unnecessary pain. Meaning, uh, uh, you shouldn't sharpen the knife in the animal. You should not slaughter the animal in front of others. Uh, nor should you cover the, uh, you know, nor should you um, have blood of the, the slaughtered animal uh, there so that the next animal when it comes, it sees the blood. You should not do this, right? You should not allow any unnecessary pain to come to the animal. This is makru tahrimi. This is extremely disliked. This is extremely uh, disliked to uh, give the animal any pain uh, aside from, of course, what's necessary. Meaning immediately. Uh, so you're supposed to sharpen that knife so that it's very sharp, uh, but not in front of the animal. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned previously as well, the best experience I had was in South Africa. Uh, and, and subhanAllah, it was such a great experience. Um, and, and so we should try to emulate those, those, those experiences and try to limit any harm given to the animal, stunning, all of these things, if it's necessary, excuse me, if it's necessary, meaning the animal is rowdy and it's going all over the place, fine, uh, but just limit it. Don't, don't harm the animal beyond necessity. All right, and the third, the method of Qurbani, the third thing is, of course, you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then you slaughter the animal. Um, and if you forget, right, according to our madhab, we say that if you forget to say it, it's okay, right? But you should not intentionally leave out Bismillah. You should not intentionally leave out Bismillah. If you forget, it's okay. But if you intentionally leave out Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, then the animal is, is maita, meaning it's, all, it's carrion. Um, and so don't intentionally leave out Bismillah. Uh, make sure you, you, you say Bismillah. Uh, and if you forget, that's okay. Uh, the fifth is that, or rather, the fourth is that you don't skin the animal immediately. Let the animal completely die, give it a few minutes. And, and once the, the animal completely dies, then uh, you can skin and you can carry on with uh, you know the, the cutting of the, of the animal and everything else and lastly the meat should be distributed uh, preferably uh, based on the weight not based on the estimation sometimes what we do is we just okay this looks similar we'll just separate it right uh, it's best to do it based on weight it's best to do it based on weight so that there's no objection so that there's no one uh, who can say anything especially when you're doing shares with the different other people it shouldn't be that uh, you know, there should be any fights or any arguments or any disputes. Uh, and at the end of it, just make sure that everyone is happy uh, with the Qurbani and everything uh, is distributed correctly. Now, inshallah, I'll take a couple of minutes for, for questions. Any questions uh, after I mention whatever I mentioned? Good. Okay, so say I'm doing uh, one Qurbani locally mm -hmm. and I'm doing some overseas. Yes. Uh, and this is a question pertaining to cutting in the nails in your hair. Right? Mm -hmm. So if my Qurbani locally is done, say, tomorrow on Tuesday, but my Qurbani overseas is not done until Wednesday, right? Do I need to wait to cut my hair, my nails, until the last Qurbani is done, or how does that work? So uh, this, this cutting of the nails and hair and all this, uh, this is something which is mustahab, mandub. It's, it's, it's a good thing to do. Many people, unfortunately, they take it to the level of wajib and fad. It is not wajib, it is not fad, it's only recommended. It's something good. So if you do it, good, mashallah. If you don't do it, it's, there's no sin whatsoever. There's absolutely no sin if you cut your nails, if you cut your hair or anything like that. It's fine. It's good if you do do it. I mean, if you are doing qurbani, if you are doing udhiya, if you are slaughtering an animal, you should uh, you know, not trim your hair or cut, cut your nails. But if you do it, it's fine. There's no sin. And so uh, you should wait until the Qurbani. Uh, but in, the, in your question, uh, to answer your question, you should wait until uh, your Qurbani animal is slaughtered. And then uh, you can cut your nails and your so hair. All of them, right? Yes. 
What do you mean all of them? So I've been providing locally. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to say some overseas. Yeah, yeah. So if my one on, on locally is done on Tuesday, mm. right? And my Gravani overseas is done on Wednesday, Thursday, mm. do I wait till Thursday to come in here or do I, I can come It depends on wh where your share is, right? So your name will be on a specific share, right? So if your share is here, then you'll do it after that. If it's there, then you'll do it after that animal is, is, is slaughtered. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned. Uh, just one, one second, please. Just one second, please. You mentioned uh, every adult, you know, when they read to the age of puberty. So how about if the family of four, family of four, they are adult? Uh, should they consider one kurbani for that whole family, or each each one of them has to do the kurbani? According to the Hanafi madhab, we do each and every single person individually. So four people must have four shares, four shares or four different animals. Yes, Madhim Bhai? I think uh, maybe I misunderstood. He was asking he has decided to make two kurbani. No, uh, he means for his entire family. He's talking about his entire family. So wow. he wants to finish all of his kurbani and then he will cut his uh, whatever. Right. That's that my understanding. Is that what? Essentially, like, if, I, if I have all my names on all of them, whether they're locally and uh, overseas, mm -hmm. I wait till the last one is done, then I do. You, you, again, your name will be on one specific share, right? Which is wajib, right? So one qurbani is wajib for you. The remainder are all nafil. So let's say you do one on Tuesday, right? That one is wajib. The remainder are all nafil. So the nafil ones you don't consider. Uh, the wajib one is the main important one. Yes. Let's try it. Okay, Mansoor. No, not necessary. Yes. So, uh, the uh, adult and having a nisab is mutually exclusive, meaning a, f a family where kids are adults, yes. according to Islamic terms, but they don't have nisab like they are under uh, parents' production. Right. Do we still need to do their kurbani for the kids who are reach at the age of puberty? Right. Good question. So, uh, for example, let's say you have a 15 year old uh, son or daughter right, at home, um, and, and you're asking, do they have to give kurbani? Now, the answer is that if they have $5,000 or more worth of savings or worth of uh, excess, uh, excess items or things, right? For example, they have, let's say, for example, shoes, right? Uh, maybe Yusuf maybe has like this collection of shoes or something, uh, you know, exceeding $5,000, for example, right? Um, so in that case, yes, you will have to do, they, they will have to do qurbani from their own money. But generally, I recommend, this is my mashura, if you have adult children living with you, Please just do one on their behalf as well, just to stay on the safe side. Most of you can afford it, so do it. Even if it's not required of them, but, but make sure you tell them. And listen, you have to give qurbani because you have, you're an adult, number one, in sharia. And number two, because you have uh, this amount of money saved up. I won't take from your money. You have $5,000 saved up. Maybe, you know, like for example, kids have savings for college or whatever it is. Uh, you have enough savings. But I won't take from you and I I'll do it from my own money. You have to tell them. They have to know that Qurbani is being done on their behalf. Yes? So, I have one more question. So, um, uh, distribution of the, uh, uh, you know, to the poor, right? Because uh, you have the one third you need to give to the poor. Uh, so, I don't know what the plan is for here, if there is a way to do it. Right. And if you can't find uh, a way to distribute it, then what do you do with that? So, as I mentioned, it's preferable to distribute it in three shares, uh, three portions, right? One portion you keep for yourself, one portion you keep, give to your family, and another portion you give, uh, uh, no, sorry, forgive me. Um, no, so, so I, 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 I did not mention this, forgive me, I, I said it incorrectly. Um, no, everyone, just let me speak, please. Uh, the first share you keep for yourself, the second share you give to your friends and family, the third share you give to the poor, right? Now, this is not a requirement. If you don't have poor people or you don't know who to give it to or you frankly just don't want to give it to anyone else, you don't have to. It's not necessary. It's a recommendation. If you want to, you can. Right? And, but from our community, we are actually, uh, we have like half a dozen people, alhamdulillah, at least uh, that we are speaking to and confirms at least six, seven people that we are going to uh, give meat to, inshallah. Um, although one brother mentioned he'll give to all of them. I, I, so I'm not... I'm not, uh, maybe I won't allow that, or maybe I'll give all of his one, sh all of his to one person maybe, just because we all want to give, you know what I mean, and there are limited, <laughs> there are a limited number of people that we can give to. Uh, but if anyone knows, anyone who needs, or 
you know, whoever it is, just tell me, please, just send me a text, just reach out to me, just let me know that, um, uh, you know, I know someone, you don't have to tell me names, you don't have to tell me anything, you don't have to give me any information, I won't take any information, even if it's for yourself, you can take it, uh, just let me know, inshallah, just tell me that I know someone in need, that's all you need to tell me, I know someone who needs, qur or who wants Qurbani meat, that's it. A, a follow-up question to that, so if I, um, you know, I really want to get parts of, you know, this for the board, you know, right. so if I wanted to give uh, one to the, uh, you know, overseas, right. The three parts here still have to be the three parts, right? And then I know you're saying it's preferred. Yes, yes. But that's that's a separate qurbani, right? Yes. This, right? Yes. I, I yeah. These are all different qurbanis, yes. Okay. Each share is separate. Any other questions? Online, any questions? We can take it. Uh, I'll give three, mi three minutes. We'll stop at 11, inshallah. Um, yeah, last year I spoke to a Muslim, Muslim farm. A Muslim, uh, Muslim star, uh, meaning uh, a Muslim butcher, and he mentioned uh, that you know what, even if the bull is yo younger than two, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Even if it's one and a half, it's okay. Muslim, Muslim person. He was a farmer again. He was saying it's perfectly fine to do uh, to slaughter an animal which is younger than or a, a cow uh, or that that's younger than two. And of course, that's not uh, permissible. And and so please make sure that your cow, your bull your buffalo, whatever it is, make sure it's older than two. What if the farmer doesn't know the, the age? Generally, they know. Big? Generally, they know. Yeah, generally, they get from they an know. option and there is recorded yeah. uh, what, what they're doing. I mean, in general. But yeah, yeah. I don't know in most they're cases, they're in most cases, they have an, a good idea. They go by weight. Yeah. So weight-wise, they know. Yeah. So in most cases. Yeah. yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> by, by weight. Yes. Uh, there's no uh, option. Is it they don't have any record. They don't have any they tag it, but they don't yeah. know when it, yeah. it was born. Yeah. So they know by the way. I was just wondering, is it possible to so have storage here so we can bring our shares for poor and store here? Like uh, some, for fundraising, some brother brought that fridge here, right? So maybe we can store it. Right, uh, yeah, that's Zayim, mashallah. Zayim, mashallah, like their fridge. Um, no, actually, I don't think we'll have space uh, uh, this time because we are actually going to be doing a, a, a community barbecue community barbecue uh, um, uh, next weekend, next Sunday. So we'll be taking meat and u storing it for that purpose. And so I don't think we'll have space for uh, to just store it in our masjid. And I, I don't want to take that responsibility of just storing meat in, the, in our freezer until some time comes when someone needs it or anything, you know? We want to, uh, so you hold on to it, inshallah, and, and uh, distribute it to whoever you, you think is necessary. Last question, if any. If any. Can we give meat to non-Muslim Yes, yes, we can give meat to non Muslims. Yes? My question is right now, you don't want to find any food. You can keep it in your freezer and later on, if you yeah. Want to yeah. Food. yeah, that's also fine. That's also fine as well, inshallah. If you have any other questions, inshallah, feel free to obviously, you all have my number, inshallah. Uh, so let me know, inshallah, and we can discuss, um, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. I should have learned that I'm going to suffer from the food.